You know, people say evolution is not a bad philosophy, but at the same time, it was Hitler's religion during the Third Reich in Germany. Hi, my name is Eric. In this next seminar, Dr. Hovind exposes some of the terrible things that have been done in the name of evolution. Because dictators throughout time have used the evolutionary ideas to support their brutal tactics. I taught high school science for 15 years, and now for 14 years I've been an evangelist traveling and doing seminars on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. And tonight we're going to share with you some of the dangers of this evolution theory. I don't leave my gorgeous wife and travel every week of the year because I like being gone. <laughs> Folks, this is an, evolution is not just a dumb idea, it's a very dangerous philosophy. I've only got three things I want to cover, but it's probably going to take several nights to do that. First of all, I want to tell you what on earth is happening. And secondly, why is the evolution theory dangerous, and what do you do about it? Pretty simple. Okay, what is happening? Tonight, as I speak, our president is announcing we're about to go blow up Iraq, I believe, right? The world seems to be coming unglued at the seams. There are wars and rumors of wars every place we look. Why on earth would Joseph Stalin order the execution of 14,700 Polish prisoner of war officers? I thought there was a Geneva Convention. Why do you order the execution of prisoners of war? Why did Hitler order the execution of nearly six million Jews plus others? Why did Paul Pot, later in the Cam Cambodian Khmer Rouge, order the execution of one-third to one-half of his entire population, his own people? He killed them. Why? Why would somebody do that? Why would the Australian Aborigines be rounded up like cows and shot so their heads could be put in museums years ago? Why would somebody do that? Why did Kip Kinkle murder his parents, two other classmates, and shoot 26 other ones? Why would a student do that? Kip said, if there was a God, he wouldn't let me feel the way I do. There is no God, only hate. On May 21st, 1998, 15-year-old Kip Kinkle, a student at Thurston High School, that's in Oregon, near Eugene, allegedly entered the school cafeteria and fired more than 50 rounds from a semi-automatic rifle. 26 students were injured. Two killed. Later, the bodies of his parents were found in his home. He was then arrested and taken to a police headquarters where he attempted to murder a detective during his questioning. Kip said, if there was a God, he wouldn't let me feel the way I do. There's no God, only hate. Why have we had a nearly a 1,000% increase in violent crimes since I was a boy? I remember the days when you did not have to lock your house. We'd go off on vacation for two weeks. Wouldn't even, I, I never had a key to my house growing up. Never did have a key. I don't know if it even had one. You didn't need one in those days. Why would there be such a horrendous increase in unwed birth rates and so much of our moral structure is just simply unraveling? What on earth is happening? Dylan and uh, Eric, Her Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold made a videotape prior to the Columbine shootings. On that tape, they said, talking about one of the football players, he doesn't deserve the jaw evolution gave him. Look for his jaw. It won't be on his body. Hmm. Those, these two boys were very strong believers in evolution. They did the shooting on Hitler's birthday on purpose. They shot Isaiah Scholes just simply because he was black. They shot Cassie just because she believed in God. Same thing with Rachel. What happened? Why, why would somebody do this? What's going on in our thinking? Well, the newspaper article in Columbine High School said, the clothes may give a clue to the thinking of these teenagers. The autopsy said one of the boys' shirts said natural selection on the front. Interesting. Textbooks used in Escambia County, Florida, this textbook, says evolution and natural selection go together. Hmm. This textbook says natural selection causes evolution. Well, just what is this natural selection? Oh, you see, Adolf Hitler thought he would speed up the process by eliminating the inferiors. Hitler honestly thought he was doing the world a favor. So did Joseph Stalin. So did Paul Pott. Why do people do these things? So what is wrong with our thinking? Right after the Columbine shooting, almost instantaneously, five more students from within the Springfield School District were arrested for threatening to murder students. 
principals or teachers. In the adjacent school districts, more students were arrested for violent threats, and in one case, an elementary schoolboy shot five of his classmates with a BB gun. Could it possibly be that what we're teaching them is causing this behavior? You know, what you believe determines how you behave. If you're raised up in a headhunting society, and you're taught from the time you're a boy, if you go off to war and shoot somebody, you ought to kill him and cut off his head and uh, eat the brains because you get his spirit. I mean, if you really believe that, guess what you're going to do when you go off to war? <laughs> you're gonna, you, you, your behavior is determined by your beliefs. What you believe determines how you behave. It's always been that way, and it's no different today. Could it be that this evolution theory is to blame? This textbook says, you're an animal and share a common heritage with earthworms. Question. If evolution is true, how are the kids supposed to tell right from wrong? I spoke in a public school in Pennsylvania one time. A kid sat on the second row and he said, Mr. Hovind, I'm an atheist. I said, really? He said, yep, there is no God. I said, well, tell me, son, are you sure? He said, yep, I'm sure. I said, well, son, do you know everything? He said, no. I said, do you know maybe half of everything? He said, no. I said, okay, well, let's just pretend that you know half of everything. Is it possible that God exists in the other half you don't know? Brand new thought rattled around in his brain for a while and got lost, I believe. I said, by the way, son, if there's no God, how do you tell right from wrong? He said, oh, that's easy. He said, I determine what's right and wrong. He said, I'm the God of my own universe. I said, I'm glad to hear about that, son, because I'm going to shoot you in five minutes. He said, you can't do that. I said, oh, yeah, I can. You see, I'm the God of my own universe. And I decided it's fine for me to shoot you. Question, exactly how do we tell right from wrong? In the first couple of seminar tapes, we talked about a variety of topics like the Big Bang Theory, how it's a big dud. We talked about the Garden of Eden, and we talked about why the earth cannot be billions of years old, and why did the people live to be 900 years old before the big flood came. We talked about dinosaurs, and students are being lied to about dinosaurs. They did not live millions of years ago. And on tape number four, we talk about a whole bunch of lies in the textbooks. Now here we're going to talk about what's happened in the last 150 years since evolution became a popular theory. What on earth is happening? And what you can do about it? We'll get to that eventually. We're going to review some of what we covered on tape number four, some of the lies in the textbooks, and then go on into how it carries into some practical steps we can take. What do you do about it? We covered in the last sessions how that James Hutton wrote a book in 1795, and he said the earth is millions of years old. Now during the late 1700s, most folks believed the Bible. And most folks thought the earth was about 6,000 years old. Because if you add up the dates in the Bible, you're going to get about uh, 6,000, 4,000 B.C., not millions. So James Hutton came along and caused people to doubt the earth was 6,000 years old. Then his book had a very strong influence on a lawyer from Scotland named Charles Lyell. Charles Lyell wrote a book in 1830. And in his book, he developed what we call today the geologic column. Cenozoic, Mesozoic, Paleozoic, and you know, maybe you saw the movie Jurassic Park, named after the Jurassic layer. This whole thing was made up by Charles Lyell in 1830. And the geologic column does not exist any place in the world, except in the textbooks. It's pure imagination. It doesn't exist. But all of evolution theory is based on that dumb geologic column, made up in 1830. This fellow said, I myself have little doubt that in England it was the Long Age Uniformitarian Geology and the theory of evolution that changed us from a Christian to a pagan nation. He's right about that. And England is a pagan nation. And folks, I don't know if America ever was a Christian country or not, but it's not now. Right. We are a pagan nation also. What has happened? Charles Lyell's book had a very strong influence on a young preacher named Charles Darwin. Darwin graduated from Bible college to be a preacher. In 1859, after 22 years of writing, Darwin finally published his book, The Origin of Species. We'll get into more of that later, the real title to the book. Darwin's philosophy was strongly influenced by people like Charles Lyell, people like Thomas Malthus. Malthus had written a book that said, there are more babies born than can possibly survive, so it's best if the weakest die off. That greatly influenced people like Charles Dickens when he wrote the Christmas Carol. Remember the scene in there where Scrooge said, well, if he's going to die, let him die, then decrease the surplus population. Remember that line in there? You can, I don't think you can understand the Christmas carol, the history behind that, until you understand how evolution ties in. James Hutton's book made people doubt the earth was 6,000 years old. Along came Charlie Lyell, and people began to doubt the flood. 
Because instead of the flood making all those layers, they said, oh, maybe each layer is a different age. And then along came Charlie Darwin, and people began to doubt the Creator. And so by the mid-1800s, the Western world, at least, was left with in, a, in a bad situation. They said, well, if there's no God, who's in charge? Well, it uh, must be us. This led directly to the rise of humanism. Humanism is the teaching that there is no God, so we must be God. We make the rules. We decide what's right and wrong. For the next 50 years, after Darwin's book came out, many isms arose in the world. Marxism, Nazism, Communism. These things, Communism would have been just a footnote in a history book if it hadn't been for evolution coming along at the right time. We never would have heard of Communism, most of us wouldn't, if it hadn't been for Charles Darwin coming along and giving justification to that dumb idea of Communism. Hoyle said, I'm haunted by a conviction that the nihilistic philosophy, which so-called educated opinion chose to adapt, adopt following the publication of The Origin of Species, committed mankind to a course of automatic self-destruction. A doomsday was then set ticking. I agree, Fred. Once you start believing there's no God and we're in charge, then we're in trouble. There was a Russian atheist astronomer who came to America one time, and he spoke at one of the universities, and he said, now folks, either there is a God or there isn't. I thought, boy, this guy's brilliant. <laughs> but then he said, both possibilities are frightening. I thought, wow, wow, that is brilliant. You see, if there is a God, we better find out who He is and find out what He wants and do what He says. Amen. If there is no God, we're in trouble because we're hurtling through space at 66,000 miles an hour and nobody's in charge. Pretty scary thought. Charles Darwin said, often, a cold shudder has run through me as I have asked myself whether I may have devoted myself to a fantasy. Well, Charlie, you did devote yourself to a fantasy. If you believe you came from a rock 4.6 billion years ago, you need help. You were designed for a purpose. Now, what is it? There are four great questions that every single religion in the world tries to answer. Even atheism, which is a religion, you have to believe there is no God. There's no way to know that. The four great questions every religion tries to answer. Who am I? Where did I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going when I die? The way you answer these questions depends upon how you view the world. There are basically only two ways to look at this world. One view says, you know, there's incredible design. There must be a designer. That's the creationist worldview. Other people look at the world and say, you know, nobody made it. It just made itself. They don't believe God created the heaven and the earth. They think a big bang made this world from nothing. That's called the humanist worldview. It just made itself. The first plank in the Humanist Manifesto in 1933 was the universe is self-created, self-existing, and not created. That's the first thing they have to agree to, to be a humanist. There's now been Humanist Manifesto 2 in 1973 and Humanist Manifesto 3 in the year 2000. They attempt to declare what they believe. Humanism is a religion. You have to believe there is no God. So why is this theory dangerous? Evolution, I am convinced after studying this now for 30-some years, Evolution is absolutely the foundation for communism, Marxism, Nazism, socialism, racism. We'll get into some more of that in a minute. Number one, I think evolution is dangerous because it's bad science based on lies. There is no scientific evidence to back up this evolution theory. We've been offering $250,000 for a long time at our ministry for somebody who could give us some real scientific evidence for evolution. It is funny, brother, to see the people try to turn stuff in. One guy said, I've got proof for evolution. I said, really, what do you have? He said, well, I'm working in the laboratory right now, and we have developed soybean plants that are resistant to frost. I said, man, that's good. That'll really be handy. I said, what did you start with? He said, well, um, soybean plants. I said, oh, what do you have now? He said, I've got a whole new species. I said, of what? Of a uh, soybean plant. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, sir. That's not evolution, okay? That's a variety of a soybean plant. And it's interesting, and I'm glad you're able to do that. But that's not evolution. There is no evidence whatsoever that any animal ever produced a different kind of animal. So why would anybody believe such a dumb idea? And how can this be so dangerous? Well, we'll cover some of the isms in just a minute. But evolution is based on lies and bad science. There is no good science to back it up. This textbook says, evolution is a fact. Evolution is a fact, not theory. Birds arose from non-birds and humans from non-humans. No person who pretends to any understanding of the natural world can deny these facts any more than she or he can deny that the earth is round, rotates on its axis, and revolves around the sun. Sounds like he's open-minded for a discussion, doesn't it? 
This is not a fact, folks. Evolution is a mantra. They say this over and over and over, hoping it will become true. It's, that's all it is. They just keep repeating it. Oh, hope, evolution's a fact, it's a fact, it's a fact. Well, you better define what you're talking about with evolution. We do that on videotape number four, the six different meanings of this word evolution. This textbook says evolution has evidence from fossils, from structure, from molecular biology, from development. Any evidence that's used to support evolution has been proven wrong. Now, I said many times, I'm not trying to get evolution out of the schools. I just want the lies out of the textbooks. We almost got a bill passed in Arkansas a couple of years ago, and I went up to Arkansas and testified before the Senate, before the House Representatives Committee that was looking at this bill, HB 2548, I believe it was. And it was, the bill simply said, Arkansas will not use tax dollars to purchase materials if they contain knowingly fraudulent information. We're not going to buy books that have lies in them. And it gave a few examples, like some of the examples I gave in my seminar. If it says the embryo has gill slits, we're not going to buy it. I stood up and testified for 45 minutes before this committee. After I got done, the ACLU lady, a uh, woman I mean, she got up and she said, folks, this is an obviously an anti-evolution bill. One of the representatives said, uh, ma'am, evolution is not mentioned in this bill. All this bill says is we're not going to buy books if they have lies in them, and these things are lies, so we're not going to buy that book. How can you say this is an anti-evolution bill? And she said, everything mentioned in this bill is used to support the evolution theory. And the guy said, well, ma'am, is it true that these things mentioned here are, are, are false? She said, well, yes, but obviously this is an anti-evolution bill. She knew full well. If you, if you took all the lies out of the textbooks, there would be nothing left to support the evolution theory. I was in a debate one time at University of West Florida, and the uh, professor got up and he said, now, Mr. Hoven, you're claiming all these things are lies, and you're right, you're, all these things have been proven wrong, but, he said, I got a question for you. You told us we got to take all this stuff out of the book. What are you going to replace it with? <laughs> I said, uh, folks, what he's trying to not say is, uh, we want the kids to believe in evolution. We have to give them some evidence, and all we have are these lies, and you want to take these out of the book, so you better find some more evidence for my theory. I said, sir, if you don't have any evidence for your theory, I'm sorry. Maybe you ought to consider getting a new theory. I could suggest one for you, if you'd like. He did not like. <laughs> he don't want to hear about it, okay? All they have to support their theory are things that have been proven wrong many, many years ago. Here's some of the lies we covered in the first so many hours of this seminar so far. I'll just review them very, very quickly. The Colorado River was not formed slowly. Well, the Grand Canyon did not slowly form by the Colorado River running through it. Okay? The geologic column does not portray Earth's history. It does not even exist anywhere in the world. Rocks do not date the fossils. The fossils do not date the rocks. It is based on circular reasoning. We cover that on videotape number four. There are no index fossils. There's no such thing as an index fossil. The layers are not different ages. Petrified trees connecting them all prove the layers all formed at the same time. We cover that on video number four. Plants and animals are not related to each other. They have the same designer, but not the same uncle and grandpa. Change in species is not the real meaning of the word evolution. That's not really what they mean. There's a whole lot more to that. We covered that on video four. Natural selection does not cause any evolution. Natural selection selects. It doesn't create a thing. We believe in natural selection. The pepper and moth story never happened. It's a lie. The comparative anatomy does not prove common ancestry. We covered that on videotape number four. Humans never have any gill slits. It's a human at conception. It's not a fish or an amphibian or anything else. And abortion is murder, plain and simple. Okay? The appendix is not vestigial. You do need your appendix. The whale does not have a vestigial pelvis. That is a lie. The human tailbone is not vestigial. If you think it is, I'll pay to have yours removed. <laughs> Dinosaurs did not live millions of years ago. Man did not evolve from animals or cavemen. The Big Bang is a big dud. It didn't happen. The horse series in your textbooks is a lie, proven wrong 50 years ago. Life cannot evolve from non-living matter, like the textbook says. The law does not ban teaching creation science, like some people want you to think. It's perfectly fine to teach creation science in the public schools. We'll get into more of that later. Smaller is not simpler. A little paramecium is more complex than a space shuttle. Smaller is not simpler. Smaller is more complex. But birds did not come from dinosaurs. Talk about a dumb idea. The eye did not arise by slow changes over billions of years. The first bird did not hatch from a reptile egg like Goldschmidt said. The trees of life in the textbooks are pure imagination. They didn't happen, folks. They drew it on paper, and that's as far as it goes. It didn't happen in reality. 
DNA does not prove evolution, it proves creation, it proves a designer. Fossils do not provide any evidence for evolution. Fossils don't count at all. You find a bone in the dirt, you can't prove that bone had any kids, <laughs> let alone kids that lived, and certainly not kids that were different than the grandparents. Fossils simply are a dead end street. They don't count for evolution. The earth was never, is, the earth is not billions of years old, and the earth was never a hot molten mass. The Pangea theory that's taught in your books never existed. They say, all the continents used to fit together. I get that all the time. Oh, do you think all the continents used to fit together? I used to touch each other? I said, well, they still are. It's just the low places are full of water. I mean, the continents are still connected, you know. <laughs> what do you mean, did they? Hello. They still are. <laughs> Animals and plants are designed, not adapted to their environments. There are no simple living organisms. Life did not arise three and a half billion years ago, like the textbook says. The sun did not form before the earth, like the textbook says. Scientists have not made life in the laboratory. Snakes do not have vestigial legs. The earth never had an oxygen-free atmosphere, like the textbook says. No animal is related to any other kind of animal. DNA is more than just chemicals. It carries information. Mutations do not improve the species. Similar bone structure does not prove a common ancestor. It proves a common designer. Amino acids do not prove relationships. Humans are not related to chimps. Darwin did not prove evolution. Textbooks do not teach kids to think critically. They teach them to not think at all. Arranging animals on paper does not prove a thing. Archaeopteryx is not part reptile. It's 100% bird. Feathers did not evolve from scales. It's not just the religious fundamentalists who disbelieve in evolution. Most folks disbelieve in evolution. Evolution is not a light which illuminates all facts. There is no evidence for the magnetic reversals at the ocean floor. The Constitution does not discuss separation of church and state. It does not discuss that. The Supreme Court did not ban creation. Let's give a little bit of the history of what really happened. In the 1800s, almost all the textbooks were thoroughly packed with information about creation, Christianity, godly teaching, kids memorized Bible verses. I remember in public school in Illinois growing up, we memorized Bible verses and said prayer every morning. Didn't hurt the kids a bit. Helped them quite a bit. Back then, kids got in trouble for their own spit wads. Today, it's for bringing guns and shooting people. It's a different world, and some of you older folks know what I'm talking about. It has changed radically. In 1925, Tennessee passed a law that said you cannot teach creation, you cannot teach evolution. It actually banned the teaching of evolution in the public schools. It's called the Butler Act. The ACLU, which is the American Communist Lawyers Union, decided they wanted to test this law. So they ran an ad in the paper, said, we're looking for a teacher willing to claim that he taught evolution so we can have a trial to try to get this law overthrown. A guy named John T. Scopes volunteered. He said, I don't know if I taught evolution or not, but I did sub for a biology class one day, and I think all we had was a study hall, but if you want me to go testify that I taught evolution, I'll do it. So John Scopes went on the trial, lasted 10 days in the hot July Tennessee summer. After 10 days, John Scopes was found guilty of breaking the law. The law said, you can't teach evolution. He claimed he did, so he's found guilty. He, did, he admitted he did. He was fined 100 bucks. Case was over. Later, the fine was overturned on a technicality, but the judgment was not overturned. The evolutionists lost the Scopes Monkey Trial. If you want to read the entire story about what really happened, you can see it right here in this book, The Scopes Monkey Trial, the Tennessee, the world's most famous court trial. And by the way, if there's a movie circulating around your school called Inherit the Wind, you better be real careful about that. That's a dangerous movie. That takes, it does everything they can. It twists everything about the trial, to make the Christians look dumb. You want to read word for word every word that was spoken there? Here it is right here, the court transcript verbatim. You can get it from Bryan College in Dayton, Tennessee. The Dayton Courthouse is still there with a big uh, museum where you can go out through and see where it actually happened. If you go north of Chattanooga, about, I don't know, 70 or 80 miles, you can get to Dayton, Tennessee. Been through there a bunch of times. There's a good uh, video expose, I mean a good book uh, expose about the Inherit the Wind movie that circulates around it. Just about every year, this is shown in public schools here in Pensacola where they try to teach the kids the Christians were dumb and they lost the trial. They changed all sorts of things about that. And you ought to be up in arms over that being shown to your kids. You can sign a statement saying, I don't want my child shown the movie Inherit the Wind. Have it notarized and take it into the school. They won't show your kid. You say, it's against my religious convictions to lie to my kids. And that movie's a lie. Okay? But I guarantee it'll be shown this year and next year and the next year. I saw it about four times growing up before I realized what a lie it was. You want to get the material from uh, Bryan College, there's their phone number, or from George Serrell, who has an excellent article about the Inherit the Wind, what really happened in the book, 
the real trial compared to the uh, Inherit the Wind movie, which is just baloney. Or you might want to get the book Ride to Glory. You can get it through our ministry. I don't read novels much, but this one is incredible. This guy said, what if the Scopes trial was redone this, this now, in the you know, 21st century, at a modern university? Whew. Brother, I couldn't put it down. I mean, I read a lot of books, but this one, I never should have started it, man. I, 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 couldn't, I didn't sleep for four days trying to finish that. <laughs> it wasn't quite that bad, but 